what's up everyone welcome to mess with casting with yet another series this is one of the most 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 uh, not so understood questions in our papers of mathematics especially for grade 11 and grade 12 welcome to this video i am casting mapala today we'll be taking you through the graphs and we are checking for which values of x is f of x greater than uh, g of x or f of x uh, over g of x will give us less than less or equal to zero all right so i've already drawn the curve here we've got question a b c and d please pay attention as this is going to be a series this is just one of the most videos that we will post concerning this question there are three different cases so you might want to watch this video until the end so that you fully understand this part so that when we go to uh, case number two and case number three you fully understand that one as well so that you can easily get those two marks you know i've never seen a question paper that has got a function and it doesn't have uh, this uh, question like this one especially towards the end whether it's a parabola or a hyperbola they normally have equations like this one so let's go ahead and look at this one all right okay now for a situation where you are to ask uh, for which values of x is f of x okay let me just come here and say f is a parabola and then a g of x is this straight line here okay there you go right i think that's clear right so now if you were to ask for which values of x is f of x greater or equal to or g of x is less or equal to or less or greater okay so therefore already there i can see that uh, i have made a mistake here okay no there's no mistake it's fine this is f of x this is g of x okay just different ways okay so now in a question like this one guys you might want to understand first please note i'm just gonna put it here and b if you are dealing in with a situation where one graph is greater or equal to uh, the other graph for g of x less or equal to or just less rather okay in this case you look at the in this case always always use point of intercept between the two curves point of intercept okay so here you're just going to use the point where the two graphs meet each other okay because now they are asking you if the other graph is on top of the other one ne? okay you use the point of intercepts i've already marked them here is right here's a point of intercept here and then here's another one here so you're going to use this point of intercept to divide the graph and to check where is the other graph on top of the other one all right so basically what what this means it means the graph of f is on top of the graph of g here this means the graph of g here the graph of g is less than the graph of f okay so let's look at it now we're going to divide this uh, our cartesian plane into this part okay here's the first point of intersection reading it from left to right so we're going to put a dotted line there there you go and then here's another one here i'm going to put a dotted line there as well there you go okay so basically what have we done we divided our graph into three space here's a uh, number one here here's number two then here's space number three Okay, so we have divided our graph into these three parts. Okay, vertically so. Right. So now let's go ahead and said we said okay, you know, if we are looking for a situation where the other graph is greater than the other one or less than the other one, we use what? Point of intersection. Please take note of this, guys. Please put it because as we go on, we are dealing with the graph that is that is over the other one, like this one here, f of x like in this case here f of x uh, over g of x we're going to look at different points so for now we're using point of intersection where the other graph is greater or less than the other one right good stuff so now let's come here number a a it says that uh, f of x is greater or equals to g of x okay so what does this mean the graph this graph is on top of g of x 
So let's come here and have a look at in this case here. As you can see in this case, f of x is here, it's on top of g of x. So in this case here, it's correct. So it means now it's from this side going there. Can you see? It's from negative infinity up until negative 2. Okay. So if we come to uh, this space here, space 2, or you can call it phase 2 or stage 2 like XCOM. So let's have a look at this one here. Okay. You'll say, you see, g of x is on top of f of x. So therefore, this part. It's not gonna work so normally if the first part does if the first part work the second one doesn't work and then here this the third part would probably work so it works doesn't work it works so that's how uh, it goes it's like left right left right so now here doesn't work here it worked on on stage one stage two didn't work so most likely stage three is it should work so let's see f of x is on top of g so therefore this is correct okay so now how would you explain this okay you can explain this in sigma notation or you can just um, write it in inequality notation okay i'm going to express it in sigma notation at first all right so here we go here you're going to say x is the element of you are starting from what you are starting from infinity because this graph goes all the way so is a negative side of infinity remember they said the values of x you are looking for the values of x you don't care about the values of y so this is negative infinity from x side okay so you are going to say negative infinity up until what up until negative two okay so now what do you use from infinity you don't close it you put an open bracket here but then this side because of this greater or equal to you close it like with a square bracket okay and then we just explained this part here on phase on stage one so i'm going to just gonna put here stage one explaining this part so or this is we put or like in probability we'll put a u there let me explain stage three where it's satisfied so here we start from two going there to positive infinity all right so what does this mean this means that now you start from two going to positive infinity but infinity we know goes all the way so we can't close it it's going to be like that open bracket therefore here is going to be square bracket right so now in uh, this is in sigma notation so if you want to explain it in terms of um, inequality notation you are going to say for values where for all the values where x is less or equal to negative 2 and therefore also for values where x is greater or equal to 2 okay basically you are saying starting from positive 2 going there f of x is greater than g of x starting from negative going all the way there less is going to be f of x it will be greater than g of x okay i hope you understand it so far guys so i'm, I'm gonna take out these parts here because they are referring to the first question before we move to the next question if you don't understand please leave a comment on the comment section below and then uh, we are just uh, doing these questions because we know that we want to get those two marks those two marks will assist us to get distinctions when it comes to questions like this one so please watch this video until the end so that you are fully understood because they are different three cases like i said so this is just case number one and then please make sure that you stay tuned and then you watch the rest of the videos thereof okay so b b it's saying oh actually here i explained b yeah all right okay doesn't matter it's fine uh this is b so now oh okay let me see okay this is not b man what am i saying now oh I haven't had my coffee morning okay here we go okay we're fine so far so good i think we are on the right track okay f of x is less or equal to g of x okay so now you are looking for a situation where the graph of f of x is less than the g of x so this is a situation where f of x is below maybe i should write it here f of x in this case is below g of x 
this is where f of x is below g of x there where is greater f of x is on top f of x is on on top of g of x then in this case here f of x is below is below g of x right yes thank you guys and i think we are getting there now all right let's have a look at that the situation where it is below here the first case the first stage here you can see clearly that f of x is above so therefore this won't work and we said if it's left right left right so the second one is most likely to work we just need to confirm it here let's see f of x here starting from negative 2 going all the way to 2 f of x it is below the g of x all right and if this one works most likely stage 3 won't work okay so now let's come here and describe this middle part here only this because this is where it is okay you will come here and say the x is the element of all the numbers in sigma notation because of this sign is going to be square bracket if it was not this sign guys please take note that you know you must know that this one means square bracket and then greater just means that bracket okay please take note of this when you are busy with this ones as well all right okay so now we are starting from negative two up until two just the middle part there okay so uh, therefore in um in inequality notation you are gonna put uh, a x is l greater than negative two and x is less than two okay this is x greater than negative two x less than two so it means you are referring to this part here that is here in the middle here okay that is where f of x is below g of x all right great stuff guys i hope you get it that was b i'm just gonna remove these things here now because they belong to uh, question b all right okay great stuff so now let's move to c c guys if you don't understand please leave a comment on the comment section below so that i can do better because this is just case number one like i said it's a series we'll be going to case number two and case number three as because now you look at different things don't forget here we did discuss say you always look at the intercept if you are checking which graph is greater than the other one or less than the other one all right so now let's look at this one the c is going to g g of x is less than f of x g of x is less than f of x now let's come here and look at this situation here now uh, what are you saying we are saying here g of x is less we are looking for a situation where g of x is below the f of x okay g of x is below f of x i think it's better if you understand this in words then you shouldn't struggle to if you see this notation and you can explain it to yourself to say okay no this basically means g of x is less than f of x so let's have a look at situations where g of x is less than f of x stage one you can see g of x is here is below f of x therefore this would work and we did discuss that if stage one works stage two is most likely not to work so we just have to confirm that g of x here is on top of f of x so therefore is true and it will always hold and it will always be true all right so please get don't confuse yourself if the first stage works the second one won't work so the third one is most likely to work okay let's see now we said we're looking for a situation where g of x is less than f of x here we go g of x is here f of x is on top so therefore this one works and now let's explain that in terms of notations all right so you'll say x is the element of all real numbers we are starting from what we are starting from negative infinity up until negative two or also in this case we are starting from positive two up until positive infinity right yeah basically just from this side going there you stop here at negative two this one doesn't work from positive two you go there all right great stuff so now let's write this one down in in inequality notation 
in equality notation it says here is for the x values that are less than negative 2 or the x values that are greater than 2 all right and that's how you would explain this one guys now let's move on to d i think you guys now are getting the hang of it okay d let me just remove this ones first because they belong to the previous question all right now d you are saying we want a situation where the graph of f of x is below the graph of g of x okay i think that makes sense right okay somebody said i must always use a different color for different question let me come here and uh, i'll go for blue this time around okay okay let's see d we are saying f of x is below g of x okay all right so let's come here and look at this one we are saying where is f of x is below here on stage one f of x is not below so therefore this won't apply and what did we say we said left or right so therefore if you take a left step the next one will be right so this one is a left step is wrong so this one should be right but let's just confirm it and have a look we're saying we want f of x to be below g of x there it is here f of x in this case the whole of this case f of x it is below as we can see it is passing there all right so now if stage two works stage three is most likely not to work as we can see here f of x is above we want it to be below according to the question all right so now the only thing that is left is to describe this middle part here which is stage two then how do we do that we said x is the element of all real numbers we are starting from negative two and therefore we are ending up until two please note that i'm using these brackets because of the notation here of less than if it was greater or equal to i was going to use a square bracket but because it's less or greater we use these brackets please take note of this guys and then you don't make mistake and confuse the two and then we would write this in inequality notation and said x is between greater than negative 2 and less than 2 all right okay great stuff guys i think um this was uh, well explained and then if you think we can still do more explaining please let me know on the comment section below or use a different curve for the same questions so that you guys understand it in deeper depth i am gustin mapala i'll definitely see you on the next upload where we'll be doing case number two all right this is a series please make sure that you don't only watch only this video you watch the rest of the videos as well now let's move on and have a look at what we will be looking at in the next question the most critical thing on this one that I want you to stay with is this part right here that I said when we are dealing with a greater or equal to um, between the two curves we have to look at the in the point of interception okay where the two graphs intersect then we'll look at that one so now this now this is the next question where we'll be doing ourselves a case this is case number two guys so on case number two please make sure that you watch the next video after this one i am gustin mapala definitely let's do this one together see you on the next upload